So good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. So I'm going to do a quick round of introductions. Hi, my name is Maggie Spear. I'm Assistant Director of Admission here at HART, and I just want to welcome you to the HART Virtual Open House and Jazz Session. Uh, I am joined today with two current students, uh, Max Meather and Rob Picard, both seniors here in the Jackie McLean Institute of Jazz. We also have Rick Seiser, who's the Dean of Admission at the University of HART for joining us. He'll be answering questions in the chat as needed. And then we have Professor Nat Reeves joining us. So thank you so much. I just have a few housekeeping items. If you look down at the bottom of your screen, you'll notice that there is both a chat option and a question and answer option. Uh, please, throughout this session, put your questions in the Q&A. We're gonna go over a bunch of things from introductions to some listening to preparing your audition and how to prepare your audition. And then Max and Rob will tell you a little bit about their experience. But any questions you have about student life, what their day looks like, things like that, just drop those in the Q&A and we'll either answer them via a uh, typed response or later when we do have our student panel time, they'll pop in and answer some of those questions. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Professor Nat Reeves. Hello, my name is Nat Reeves. I am Associate Professor here at the Jack McLean Institute, the Hart School. Uh, Mr. McLean founded this program and I had an opportunity to work with him in the classroom on the bandstand and in the recording studio. Our faculty are world-renowned musicians. Many are, are graduates of our program, and we are proud of our excellent reputation and track rec record of producing musicians who are prominent in the music world today. As with each of the arts, teaching music is essentially a mentorship or apprenticeship. My own musical experience has come through my experience working one-on-one -on -one with the top musicians in the field of jazz today. I do my best to serve as a role model for young musicians, and I see evidence of success each year at our graduation ceremony when our graduating seniors receive their diplomas. I reflect on how much they have matured both musically and personally, and it's truly rewarding to see how proud they are as they achieve and accomplish their confidence for the future. So. Thank you so much, Nat, for that introduction. Uh, I'm going to do a little, we're going to jump between some screen sharing and some talking, so bear with us. Uh, I'm going to switch over. So you should see. So uh, we are at the Hart School, and we are actually a part of the University of Hartford. So when you go through your application process and things of that like, you'll actually be seeing the University of Hartford a lot. And that's actually one of the wonderful things about the Hart School is that we are a conservatory level training within a university, meaning you'll be taking classes with students who have vastly different interests than you, especially in your first two years. Like I said, the Jackie McLean Institute of Jazz. We did some welcome and introductions. We're going to talk about rising confidently and what our faculty and their mentorship bring to our students, as well as some really awesome projects they get to do. We're going to listen a little bit. Uh, then we're going to talk through uh, what auditions look like this year in the year of COVID. So they do look a little differently, and I know that there are probably many questions related to that. Uh, we're going to talk about some audition advice and some practice advice in the time of COVID from Professor Reeves. And then we're going to open it up to uh, Max and Rob to talk a little bit about their experience as students here at the Hart School. And then if you have any questions for them. So here we have a picture actually of the director. He sends his regrets. He couldn't be with us tonight. This is Javon Jackson and a student teaching. And here we're going to, uh, Professor Reese has kindly put together about two to three minutes of music, kind of clips from past performances in the, from the Jackie McLean Institute. Performance is a huge and integral piece of the experience here, from jam sessions to rehearsals to true performance, whether it's on campus or off campus, and uh, really absorbing art at every level.
As you saw in those clips, performance is great and the mentorship that you get here at the Jackie McLean Institute is like none other. You're actually playing with jazz legends uh, on a daily basis. Also, unlike other schools, you're a jazz major from day one. You start performing in your first semester as a jazz major in combo and big band and class. Uh, I'm going to pass it over now to uh, Professor Reeves to talk a little bit more about our distinctive faculty and the different opportunities he's had students experience during his time here. Well, that particular photograph was a photograph of the professors and the students in the studio. And while starting to play an ensemble, we prepared the students for recording and for high profile performances. And that's one of the things that stick out at this school as the students' abilities to become personal one-on-one -on -one with the professors and to really learn how to play at a high level. And it's something that all the professors do here. They all have their world-renowned careers and we're happy for the students. And I think this is a really great school for any young person who wants to learn to play jazz. And Nat, you've been here a few years. Who else joins you on this stellar faculty? Well, on that particular few videos on trombone is Professor Steve Davis. And Steve Davis and I worked with the great Jackie McLean. And we also have, as you saw earlier, Professor Jackson, who also worked with the Art Blake and Jazz Messengers, Freddie Hubbard. We have Mr. Eric McPherson, who's our drum teacher here on campus. He and I worked together with Jackie McLean, and he was a student when he toured the world with Jackie McLean. We have, uh, er, uh, we have uh, Rich Goldstein, who teaches guitar here. We have on piano, uh, Mr. Rich Germanson, who is one of the most in-demand pianists in jazz, and who I also recorded two recordings with. Uh, we have the great Abe Burton, who is one of the students who came to, from New York to Hartford to study with Jackie McLean. And we have Sean Montero, who's a wonderful vocal teacher who has her, also has her career as a performing artist. We have, everyone here is known in the jazz field, as well as the students who graduate from Jackie McLean as a school of jazz. We have a great reputation of preparing young students for the real world performances. Earlier today in our conversations, you talked a little bit about the heart of the Jackie McLean Institute and the lessons learned from Jackie. Um, I don't know, we didn't talk about this, but I think it's just so important to share 
why the heart difference like what does what sets aside from the stellar faculty and the performance experience that the students get like what's the core at the core of the Jack and McLean Institute I think it's it's uh, help that student find themselves and become grow into being a grown up being grown grown ups uh, they watch us as their role model and they come to our performances it, we're, we're here for them we're here we're, they're not numbers to us they're people and I love all the students and I that's why I've been here so long and I'm able to change with the times and continue supporting the students here at the Jack McLean Institute. The University of Hartford has a great faculty you know, not only in jazz but in you know in theory composition music production every every department we all share the students share we're giving these students the knowledge that they have thanks so now we're going to move along to probably some of the attendees questions about admission i'm going to try and not make it the most dry thing you've ever heard but i know that during this time Every school is changing their admission process, and so it's pretty important to go for, over that in meetings like this. So let's get started. We're ready to be bold. We're ready for the hard school. We're ready to learn from the greats. Uh, all auditions this year, being mindful of the health and safety of our students, faculty, their families, you and your families are going to be pre-recorded. There will not be in-person auditions this year. What you're looking at in terms of the application timeline is we're still hoping to share that in-person experience with you after you audition and are accepted. We're pending approval. This is all pending approval and watching the health and safety. So let's talk a little bit more about what this application process looks like and what the audition process looks like. So the University of Hartford is where you'll be applying. I know we talk about the Hart School, we talk about the Jackie McLean Institute. All of these are umbrellas underneath the University of Hartford, which is a stellar university with seven different schools. So the Hart School being one of those. Through this, you can all um, apply through the University of Hartford online portal which is on their website. I think it's hartford.edu slash apply. I'll bring you right there. You can also use the Common App, which I know a lot of students are using right now. And then there's the accepted profile. For Jazz, I would steer away from the accepted profile just because it does come with a fee, whereas right now the University of Hartford portal and the Common App have no fee until November 1st. So if you're looking to maybe save a couple dollars on all of these audition fees and application fees, get in your stuff early. When you do apply through the Common App, what will happen is you'll get an email that says, hey, you've got to still upload some of your heart stuff. When you do it through the University of Hartford portal, it'll be right built in within the application. So things that are going to be different from maybe or additional to the Common App is your audition video, which we'll talk about in a minute. You have a heart specific essay, which talks about yourself as an artist a performance resume, a repertoire list, a letter of recommendation. And this is, we're asking that an artistic letter of recommendation. So go to your private lesson teacher, go to your band director, someone who knows you so well and can really share with us on the team who you are, who you are as a person, who you are as a musician and how you bring that all together. And then academic records. And regretfully for jazz, you don't have to put in a photo. But if you would like, we'll gladly take a headshot as well. That's typically for our musical theater and acting students. Audition requirements, really at the core, we want to know who you are as a musician. We don't want to tell you you have to play this tune. And we want to know what showcases what you're doing right now best. And whether you do that through reflection on your own or with your teacher or with a band director, take that time and think about it. For melodic instruments and percussion, the 12 bar blues, medium tempo, no required head. There is the recommendation of now's the time, Billy's Bounds, we joked about CGM blues. Then a standard, Broadway jazz standard, medium to bright tempo, and then a ballad. So really we're looking for the juxtaposition of these pieces to see your full range as a musician. For vocalists, you're going to do a standard, uh, Latin or bossa nova, 
and a ballad. Again, we're looking for range. All of this would be kind of a head in, a couple choruses of solos, and a head out. We want to hear your voice. One thing you want to think about is that these auditions do not have to have a backing track, but you can. We know that right now, playing live with your friends might not be happening. And so we're going to actually bring Professor Reeves back on to talk a little bit about how do we practice right now? How do we prepare our audition? Do we use a backing track? Do we not? And so he's going to talk about the wonderful Jamie Abersaltz, and I'll just play because I get a kick out of it. I think all of us know this famous count in. One, two, one, two, three, four. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Professor Reeves to share a little bit more about how he's practicing, how we can think about auditions, uh, and what he's sharing with students right now. You know, what's, what's kind of funny about all of this is uh, that's how I learned to play was by using Jamie Abersall play alongs because there was always a time when I would want to learn a song or play with a rhythm section and there was no one to play along with. So Jamie had a vision, I think maybe in the late 60s, early 70s, of, of putting together a series of play alongs. So he put a get together about 133 volumes of play alongs. So I use those in my class, which also I use the online resources of Alexander Street so that I can introduce the students to a lot of different versions of the same songs that they were trying to learn. And uh, just kind of doing what we used to do when we were learning, listening more and trying to find out how to find changes for a song. Everything wasn't so easily available. So it's a little bit of old school and new school together. The play alongs are very important and with the right guidance, I think it's a, a really great way to sharpen your skills and be safe at the same time. Thanks so much, Nat. Along with that is you can use those play alongs on your recording and whether you keep that in a click track in your ear or you have it on a speaker behind you, uh, we're really interested in just hearing you as an individual. Uh, so please, it is a video recording. I know I got that question. Uh, so it's a video, but please do not go to the studio and spend thousands of dollars on a recording. Uh, we want to hear you. We don't want to hear the mixer. We don't want to hear, you know, multiple takes sliced together. We just want one video with your, you know, your blues, and then another with your standard, and another one with your ballad. So those are three separate videos you upload through our portal. Uh, and they are videos uh, that, you know, can with or without a backing track. Are there any quick questions while we're talking about auditions or prepping for the audition from the attendees? Quiet group, jazz majors. Okay, for the parents who are there, you saw really briefly a slide about scholarship and financial support. So the university, the Hart School actually has three different types of scholarships we offer. Our primary one is our performing arts scholarship. It can range up to a full scholarship to the Hart School. There are then merit scholarships and academic scholarships. One of the great thing about being part of the University of Hartford is that there are academic scholarships that are set aside and dedicated for all students at the University of Hartford, regardless of what school they're in, for their academics. And then there are also grants, financial aid. Uh, as someone who once worked in financial aid, start your FAFSA now. If your student's on here and your, your parents aren't in the room, say, hey, I heard about this thing called FAFSA. It does take a while, but that is how you will qualify for the most aid, and that is important in this day and age. Uh, and then without further ado, I did have a slide, but since we're up here, uh, I'm going to introduce Max and Rob, who are two, the two seniors in the Jackie McLean Institute and have been with us for four years. Uh, Max is actually, I think, on campus right now in one of the practice rooms. Uh, yep, <laughs> and Rob is at home but he was on campus earlier this week. So could each of you maybe talk a little bit about what does a day look like 
for you as a jazz major here at the Jack and Clean Institute? Well, it usually starts out in here, uh, depending on when I wake up, get a couple hours in practicing, and um, then we go to class. Um, this year, the ensembles are actually in the morning, so we do that. Sometimes uh, back a few years or a year ago, I would lunch with Professor Reeves or something, uh, come back, practice a little bit, usually have another class and then uh, retire for the evening to go uh, to a jam session or something. That there was actually several each week, uh, one right next to where me and Rob live. So it was, it was pretty fun. It's a fun day. Yeah, I think that I think that Max um, really got to the point of it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of like there is classwork. You know, because we're university students, not only conservatory students. However, there's still definitely a lot of time to get to practicing, to get to other things too. I spend a lot of time at at the park down the street at Elizabeth Park. I actually see Professor Reeves there sometimes. <laughs> so. You know, there's, you know, there's a lot to be done. You know, you, you, we get to the school work, but there's a lot of other things happening too. Yeah. Um, both, on both, the, sorry. Oh, go I was ahead, just going to say both, both gentlemen were in my ensemble, so we had some really good times. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, no. I want to say that. Um, you guys mentioned being a part of the University of Hartford and taking classes. You're seniors now, so you have a little bit more flexibility in your schedule for possibly incoming freshmen who are really on this call. What what did your freshman year look like? That was a bit busier. Actually, a lot <laughs> busier. But it's, uh, a, it makes the rest of the time seem a little more mellow. It's actually, um, you get most of the work done, the work, I'm going to say work, uh, freshman and sophomore year where you really got to put your nose to the grindstone and take care of the gen eds, take care of your English, your math, your science. And uh, along with music theory, ear training, composition, arranging. And, um, but like Rob said, there's always time to find time to, to get in the practice room. I would like to say also that I personally have found that my time in the university classes is, is very productive. You know, in high school, especially, I found myself just like doing the bare minimum, trying to get through school. How, however, I have, I have definitely gotten away from that. I've gotten a lot out of all my classes at the university. What was the thing that maybe surprised you the most when you came to heart or the, the memory that kind of sticks out and you're like, yeah, that, that was the heart experience. Probably uh, one of the first days of rehearsals when we take, uh, well, me and Rob know this, but we take the drums upstairs to the fourth floor and then we see all the way down the hall the doors are open and the professors are out and we're mingling, having coffee. And then two o'clock hits, everybody goes in, they start playing. And it was, it was pretty interesting to like, if I took a break, if I had to go to the bathroom, walking down, looking in the windows and I was like, wow, this is like music everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Music everywhere. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. Music everywhere. Yeah. I mean, the playing has been an important aspect, especially outside of school too. You know, I've gotten lots of opportunities to play. When I was younger here, a lot of the older kids would, would hire me to be in their bands and they would be teaching me things, you know, outside of the classroom. Um, I even, I've played outside of school a couple of times with Professor Reeves even. So you get these opportunities that, uh, yeah, they're unparalleled. I'm not sure where else I would have gotten so many opportunities to learn so much. Uh, what 
you guys lived on campus, I assume, your first year, and it looks like, Rob, you're off campus now. How has that been in terms of a blended life? What was your on-campus experience like when you first got here? Yeah, it was cool. Uh, I was there for two years, my freshman and sophomore year. Uh, um, I was in Hawk Hall, actually, uh, which is, you should apply for Hawk Hall. It's a, it's a good dorm. And... Um, yeah, it was, it was cool. Just uh, so you're in the conservatory all day, and you're with musicians, and then you step out to the, the commons, and you you meet like so many people with so many different interests. And I found like that a lot of my friends had nothing. To, they just liked music. They didn't play or nothing. But um, you know, you throw a frisbee with with someone, and then all of a sudden you're best friends. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> so it was cool. There's always something to do. Like you step out, and there's like just there's always something somewhere to go you know yeah I definitely made a lot of friends my freshman year when I lived on campus which is obviously very important when you move away from home I'm from Ohio you know and so when I came out here I was and I was 17 and, and stuff I definitely felt homesick at first but that goes away rapidly I would say And um, all of these students are currently thinking about college and they're probably starting to prep their audition tapes and things of that nature. Do you have a piece of advice for them during this season? Uh, well, I'm not gonna say don't stress about it because it's, it's a stressful time and uh, you know, your nerves are, I mean, when I auditioned in person, I was, I was definitely nervous. I think everybody was, but, uh, just be yourself practice and then, and then let it, let that take care of, of what you need to do when you're taking care of business, you know, and just be yourself. Don't try to be like, um, you know, be professional, but, but also just like, yeah, be yourself. Yeah. That's that's it. If you take care of the instrument, then the instrument will take care of you. It's nice. I feel like you two have heard that before a few times. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good one. <laughs> That's the best advice. It's very true. It's very true. Uh, and with the help of others, we can all do this. We work together. It's a great school to come to. I love it here. And with that lead in, why heart? When you were applying, what, what was that thing that drew you to heart and said, you know what, this school, this is where I'm gonna be at home? Well, to be, to be frank, I, um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do after high school at first. And uh, luckily there was a guy that I went to high school with that was, I was in a band with Nat Reeves, with him at the school, my man Dan Rice, that I went to high school with and he went to, he graduated before me, he went to Hart and he told me about it. And he was like, yeah, do you know these faculty? And I, I, I wasn't sure who was there and I started doing my research and I was like, all right, where is this common app at? I need to, uh, I need to get in there. Yeah, I wanted to be a part of this community. I wanted to study with the teachers that are here, the great faculty. I was spending a lot of my time listening to specifically Professor Steve Davis's albums. But I would listen to Jackie McLean's bands, which has all of my teachers were on these albums. And I just wanted the opportunity to come be a part of it. Um, I just, yeah, I remember me and my brothers just being very excited at the idea of me even spending time and learning from these people who we were listening to. I think that's the most important part. Any questions from the attendees who are hanging out? And uh, oh, we, we are wrapping up. I know there's, there was a question earlier about the percussion teachers that was answered by Max. Um, we do have a head of percussion. However, the Jackie McLean Institute has dedicated jazz percussion teachers. Um, 
Any other questions? We are wrapping up. I will gladly put on some more music and leave the Q&A open for a few more minutes if you have things. Uh, for Rob, Max, or Nat, if you have any questions about the Heart School or the Jackie McLean Institute, know that every admission department is a resource and every faculty member is a resource. So if you have a question, no matter how small it is, don't hesitate in asking. That's what we're here for. I know uh, Professor Reeves loves to talk to prospective students and his current students. Uh, I'm sure that Max and Rob would gladly have a conversation about their experiences here. And then if you have like boring questions about, hey, my application isn't working, that's where I can come in handy. I can also come in handy talking about scholarship uh, and the full audition process. It is possible to transfer as a junior um, it does just matter. We'll have to do an evaluation of your credit. So you may not transfer in as a junior. You, it depends on where you were studying previously and what credits can transfer over. Um, yeah, one of our good friends actually uh, that lives down the road from me and Rob transferred as a junior. And uh, he's like in our class, uh, all he had to do was a few, um, credit transfers and then he had to take one class that wasn't exactly um, uh, taught at the school that he was at before. But. And we do have someone on staff who their job is to check all of those credits and make sure that our current students are meeting their credit requirements and that transfer students are able to transfer as many credits as possible. Okay. Now, any great imparting last words of wisdom? Professor Reeves. Well, I would just say with everything that we've talked about today, I hope that you realize this is a great university and a great school to come to. And we look forward to bringing you into our family. And because we have seniors and we have to look for freshmen now. And hold on to the seniors and connect them to their next places of study. Okay, well with that, uh, I wanna thank you all for your time. I wanna thank our panelists for spending uh, a Thursday evening with us. And the, I'd like to thank Mr. Zeiser who joined us. Uh, and I wanna thank you. And I hope that we get to meet you in person next year. Uh, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate in asking, at, uh, reaching out. It's what we're here for. I'm sure you'll get lots of emails following up this session. And I think that's it. Right, guys? Thank you. Sounds good. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone.